Welcome to the historic St. Mark's Church here in beautiful Mount Kisco, New York, home to the famous G. Donald Harrison organ, Alien Skinner, Opus 1201. Before I continue, St. Mark's Church will resume public worship services on Sunday, July 5th at 9 a.m. Please see the church website and the parish newsletter for more information. In today's broadcast, we celebrate Trinity Sunday with perennial favorite hymns, including St. Patrick's Breastplate and Holy, Holy, Holy. We also hear a work by George Walker, the first black composer to be awarded the Pulitzer Prize in music. In addition, we hear a meditation from the Reverend Canon George Brandt, priest in charge here at St. Mark's Church.
My first official sermon as a cleric was preached in Chicago on Trinity Sunday over 40 years ago. I will not try and replicate it, but nor will I attempt to expound the complexities of the doctrine of the Trinity in these few short minutes. What I will try to show you is what that meaning of this otherwise abstruse doctrine means for you and I today. Our Christian faith is a revealed religion. That is to say that the teachings of our faith have been revealed to us by God in diverse but closely linked ways. It is possible to say that we have received our faith by our experience of the divine other. Our first such experience is shown in the creation narratives of the first five books of what we call the Old Testament, also known as the Pentateuch, or the first five books of Moses. These stories tell of God's action in the world by the creation of the world and humanity, and humanity's earliest sense and experience of the divine. God reveals himself in physical manifestations called theophanies, the burning bush being the most significant to the early Hebrews. On the facade of the Jewish Theological Seminary here in New York, there is a massive sculpture of a burning bush with a quote from scripture, and the bush was not burnt. This led to the call of Moses to to lead the Hebrews out of slavery toward the promised land. Then there was the theophany of the cloud by day and the torch by night, the parting of the waters and so forth, as the Hebrews responded to God's lead, finally entering the promised land with Joshua. In this, you see, God revealed himself to God's people through these natural events from which they derived divine meaning. It was not without mistakes, failures, or foolishness, but they experienced God's hand in it and God's purposes for themselves. Then the long and complex age of the prophets brings forth the teachings that anchor and instruct the Hebrews in God's purposes for them and what their responsibilities are as God's chosen people. They are to be a priestly people, a people who mediate God's love and care for his whole creation. The fundamentals are set down in the law and the prophets. All of this culminates in the appearance of John the Baptist, who proclaims the kingdom of God by recognizing Jesus as the coming Messiah, God coming into the world in the person of the one who in fact embodies the meaning of life by living out God's purposes. Remember, Jesus notes that the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than John the Baptist. But of course there is more because in Jesus' life, passion, death, and resurrection, and critically, how he is perceived that we see what God intends for all people. So the doctrine of the Trinity is the way we appropriate for our minds and lives the revelation of God which culminates in Jesus Christ. Things around us seem to be becoming more and more frightening, not least because we cannot seem to see our way out of it. We cannot plan The virus is by no means tamed. The lives of more and more of us have been seriously eroded, if not destroyed. Despite the fact that the stock market is running in a parallel universe where it seems to be proclaiming that all is wonderful, we know all is not wonderful, and it seems to be getting more frightening and more dangerous. A Russian oligarch has just sailed a 500-foot yacht into Southampton Harbor, while Great Britain around it is under coronavirus lockdown. As I write this, there is a huge, loud demonstration out on 34th Street. And tomorrow promises more. Folks make inane remarks and act in stupid ways, and offensive things are being done every day in every way. Well, I cannot do anything about that. But remember that our resurrected Lord is alive and with us in the power of the Holy Spirit to instruct us in the way we must go 
if we are truly his brothers and sisters. That is the way of the cross. That is the way of life. That is our ultimate power to live and act as Jesus would have us live and act in every and all situations as he would, not as we might conveniently prefer. That's tough, but brothers and sisters, that's the way that leads to happiness and fulfillment. God bless.